Welcome back, everybody, to Infinite Fantasy, the show where we're going through all the Final Fantasy media in release order, mm -hmm. and we're ranking them based on how much we think they define Final Fantasy as a franchise. I'm Alex. I'm Kevin. And this is it. Final Fantasy VIII yes, today. Yes, back with a big one. Back with a banger. Oh, yes. This one is a banger. It is, for sure. But before we do that... As we do on every sh uh, episode, we do the news. Oh, yes. What's been going on with Final Fantasy lately is Final Fantasy XIV Fan Fest happened in Las Vegas a couple months ago, but then they had one in London last month. Mm -hmm. They showed off some cool stuff from Final Fantasy XIV, new stuff about the new like island location that they have, mm. new expansion that's coming out next year. Sounds Looks fun. Cool. Yeah. Looks cool. Then Fall Guys, they're doing another collab with Final oh, Fantasy XIV. Wow. They had Final Fantasy XIV skins in Fall Guys, mm -hmm. and now in Final Fantasy XIV, you can go to the Gold Saucer oh. and play Fall Guys in Final Fantasy XIV like, really with cool. your avatar. That's really cool. Yeah. It, it looks interesting because it's, it's literally just Fall Guys, but with like normal-looking Final Fantasy yeah. people running around. It's so weird. That's funny. Then the last bit of news, um, there, there hasn't been a ton of news lately after our last episode because it was pretty recent, yeah. that Final Fantasy II novelization. Check it out. Such a nice little book. Oh, yes. Um, but the last bit of news is a new trailer for Kingdom Hearts Missing Link oh, came out. I don't know if you saw that. I have that. not seen that. We got we got to watch a video of it, yeah. but it's a, a mobile game oh. that looks very interesting. They revealed some information about it, uh, oh, and it seems like it's... It's going to be a match three, huh? No, 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 no. It's... It's actually, I guess, do you know anything about it at all? No, I don't. I've never heard of it. I'm pretty sure from the trailer, it is Kingdom Hearts Pokemon Go. <laughs> okay. Because it's like a GPS-based game where you like have like an overworld and you're like fighting monsters in, that, that in the overworld. Cool. But yeah, that looks, that looks cool. It, it looks, looks pretty cool, yeah. And the art looks great. I'm excited to see how they like, how... It is Kingdom Hearts. Like, yeah. Besides just the Union Cross stuff, like I'm excited to see what they do with the story. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's it seemed like it was taking place in Scala Ad Calum, mm -hmm. which was like the place where Xehanort was from in yeah. Kingdom Hearts three or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll see if there's any Final Fantasy connection because some of the recent Kingdom Hearts games haven't mm -hmm. had any like direct Final Fantasy connections. So just I put that in the news. So maybe there will be. Yeah. Maybe like Zach shows up or something oh, yeah. or. Maybe they go even further. They go like Cecil from Final oh, Fantasy IV shows. That would, that would be, be cool. so cool. I want I want some of them older characters but, in, the, like, in the games. Like I think the Disney like the Disney worlds or whatever are yeah. cool. They should do a straight up Final Fantasy world. That like, would be cool because they like they have the connection. They just haven't been using it. Yeah, like, I mean for a bit. That's Final Fantasy IV. It seems like that's kind of what they're doing. Is they're really? like going towards a more Final Fantasy or King? Did I say Final Fantasy Four? Kingdom yeah. Hearts Four. Oh yeah, what I meant. It seems like they're going into a more Final Fantasy direction with it because I know I don't know if I showed you the uh, comparison to the unreleased Final Fantasy versus Thirteen trailer. Oh yes, I think yeah, you did show me that. Where like the secret ending of the Kingdom Hearts Three DLC yes. is basically like a shot for shot remake of the Final Fantasy versus Thirteen trailer. That so could be really cool. I think there's gonna be a lot of Final Fantasy stuff in Kingdom Hearts Four. Maybe. I think that could make it really, really good. Yeah. But that's all the news that we have for today. Excellent. So let's get into Final Fantasy VIII. Oh, yes. What let's, a game. What a game. It's, we played this uh, at the remastered version mm -hmm. on, on PlayStation. Yep. Um, it was great. It was the same as like the Final Fantasy VII remake where you can do cheats mm -hmm. to increase your attack or like your limit breaks and speed up the speed game up and everything. Or no encounters if you want that. Yeah. Before we get into the plot, if you have not played this game, we just want to say, go play this go game. Go play it. Or watch a video that, like, that's, like... Explain the, or the, the, the yeah, the uh, Let's Play or yeah, something. Yeah, Let's Play if you can't find a way to play it. Because like, we're going to spoil this whole game, but, like, we genuinely think this game's amazing. Experience it for yourself. you got to play this game. It's amazing. But the story is so complex, we got to talk about this yes. story. Um, sh or should we start with the combat system first? Because that's yeah. kind of interesting. Let, let, let's do that so we don't have to like keep going back and forth. Yeah. So how that works is it's like an ATB system, mm -hmm. like some of the more recent games has been. But instead of MP, you draw magic from enemies. Mm -hmm. 
and an enemy will have a specific like type of magic. They'll have fire or stop or something, wh- whatever the enemy is like set to have. You draw it from them, and then you stock it as like an item mm-hmm. equipped to your character. But then you can use that magic to equip it to a stat yeah. if you have an available stat. So you can equip fire to your attack, and it gives a boost to your attack. Or if you connect it to your elemental attack stat, it will actually make your attack a fire attack. Yeah, it, it's it's called like junctioning. junctioning yeah. And so and so basically, like any magic that you would have that you would normally use MP for. Um, you just junction it to your stats or yeah. uh, like there's like different elemental attack and defense and all that mm-hmm. um, status attacks. You can like inflict sleep with your yeah. attack. If you have a sleep it's, attached to your, it's element really, really intricate. Like, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. I was going into this game, like thinking it was going to be really complicated and it is complicated, but mm-hmm. once you get it, it feels like the most overpowered system. Yeah. Yeah. Like, which is so cool. Like I think, I feel like they intended that yeah. somehow. And I I think part of the reason why they intended it is because of like how the the leveling up is. Yeah. Um cuz the enemies in this game they don't uh like it, it doesn't gradually get more difficult like you mm-hmm. won't walk into a, a wrong area, area and it'll be like these enemies are level 100 like they they all level with you. So yeah. I think that that might be part of it. They were like maybe these enemies like would be too hard so let's just keep it way all to that power yourself up or something yeah make yourself super overpowered yeah but i i really like it i i like the scaling to your level thing because mm-hmm. i think it's fun to just be able to do whatever you want and not have to worry about yeah the enemies being like crazy overpowered definitely and yeah you can really get overpowered in like as early as you want in mm-hmm. this game because you can technically like infinitely draw magic from an enemy i yeah. think so if you wanted to, the, like the first area you go to, Ifrit's Cave, you could just draw like 200 fires yeah. from the enemies in there and then just equip that to your attack and you're like set for the first disc of the game, mm-hmm. basically. But as far as the story goes, so we got, let's try and do it from memory, yeah. but I have the plot pulled up right here if we don't remember anything. So I believe it starts Squall and... uh cypher having a fight yes like yeah, the, the, the beginning cut scene they're fighting cut scene. and uh cypher gets squall in the face uh with like he gets the yeah. the scar and, and then, then cypher you... gets w- w- the opposite scar yes um and then sick. then you wake up in the the hospital oh. bed uh and i believe do you just go and like you get sent to start your training to be a seed yeah yeah so squall is at a place called balam garden balam mm-hmm. garden which is in this world they're like schools for child soldiers yeah. basically it's like half college half military campus yeah exactly so he's training to become what what is a seed which is just like this this military this this like military operations name for their cadets mm-hmm. or whatever um and he meets up with his teacher, uh, Quistus. Yeah. Um, what's her name? Last name? Quistus oh, Trep. Yes. Um, and Squall, Squall Leonhart. Mm-hmm. Um, Quistus is really weird because she's introduced as a teacher. Yes. But you learn later, like, she has a crush on Squall, and it feels very weird at first, but then you find out she's like 19 years old yeah like they're all like 17 they're all the same age basically or same age range and she ends up like getting demoted from teacher to like a seed i think she demotes herself yeah to like join your party or whatever but the first mission you go on is just like some training you go to ifrit's cave Mm -hmm. which is just next to belam garden um and you go fight ifrit and you I guess like befriend him and he becomes one of your guardian forces which is mm-hmm. another huge mechanic in this game yes so important the guardian forces are they are they're the summons but you can junction them to your characters mm-hmm. so they will level up with your characters and they have their own abilities that they learn yes. that will like give your character a bonus you can get um 
like bonuses to stats so when you level up your stat will also level up there's actually a lot of like variety in the abilities like and level ups that the guardian forces like give you like it it could be just stats like percentage up Mm -hmm. or or you get an extra stat boost when you level up yeah but they have things like just straight up cut encounters or Uh you can like call a shop i think or like oh yeah there there was like anywhere just random abilities like auto uh, haste and stuff yeah like auto, auto haste auto, i auto think cast haste on yourself auto potion i think there was one that was like um oh, yeah there's one that cut cut enemies completely yeah, and like then there was one that like when you walk you heal oh yeah like there's a lot of like random cool stuff that you can add to your characters mm-hmm. like it's like a whole other junctioning system yeah. with the magic then with the guardian forces yeah and then you can you know swap guardian forces between your characters mm-hmm. so like i want squall to have like a junction on his uh defense or something so i need to equip this guardian force to him and yeah. whatever that and then, that is where it gets complicated yeah yeah but then you can also just summon them as guardian forces and the interesting thing about that too is the game doesn't have mp like mm-hmm. we said so you just cast the guardian force for free but it takes some time to cast and your health bar gets replaced with the guardian forces health bar mm-hmm. so if the enemy attacks you it's doing damage to the guardian force and not you so that's kind of a way to if you think an enemy is going to do a big attack you can kind of block it yeah. by just casting a guardian force real quick but then that guardian force will be knocked out for the rest of the encounter and you can buy like guardian force potions yeah to specifically heal your guardian forces and guardian force phoenix downs and stuff so that that system i really love that system. yeah i think that system's so cool but yes yeah, so, so we mentioned cypher earlier he's like he's basically your rival mm-hmm. in the school he's like the bad boy uh and he's got his crew of uh Fu- fujin and raijin yes you know you know and uh raijin who just talks in one word sentences yeah. Um, Squall then has to go on a mission to, it's like the seed exam where they're mm-hmm. going to determine if he's good enough to be a seed. Yes. And Cypher is the lead on that mission, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Zell gets added to your team, um, who is just like a, he's a fighter. He just punches. Yeah, he's your friend. He's, he's hyper. He's your friend. He's got a cool face tat. Yeah cool face tat um does anybody else come with you on the mission i guess quistus i think just quistus and zell and what was this mission you like go on a a bridge somewhere right it's uh let's see no this is not a bridge you go like across the the ocean this is the train when you're switching the trains or no 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 uh let me see hold on okay this is what we mean when we say this is complicated there's so much to this game so there oh yeah so this is the train one. okay so you go out to um help out a rebel group yes. called the forest owls i remember this who and are trying to free sw- timber the, yes free timber swap the president yeah right? the galbadian president which mm-hmm. is like an arrival uh, nation in the world galbadia so they get in contact with the forest owls who consist of um i forget what their names are the two guys is it Biggs and Wedge? Or? No, Biggs and Wedge were the, they're like soldiers. Oh. oh. So I, f- I forget what these guys are called. Yeah. But, uh, well, actually, let me see. We got, let's pull up the we, list we of the forest owls. Uh, we got Watts and Zone. Yes. Watts one of, and one Zone. One of them, their stomach's always hurting. Yeah, yeah. And then one's just like, hello, sir. I'll help you out soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then Renoa, or Renoa, I don't, I don't really know how you yeah, pronounce it. Yeah, I'm not it. sure. Uh, is also a part of the Forest Owls. She's this lady, and Squall basically falls in love with her she, instantly. She's very important. She's got a dog named Angelo. Oh, yes, a legend. Yeah, legend. He can help you find items, and like you can use him as a limit break yep. in, in attacks. Oh, yeah, so Squall, his whole thing is he has a gun blade. Mm-hmm. So when you attack, it's kind of like a... Um, like the Mario RPG game yeah. kind of where you have kind of a timed thing you can do with Squall where you attack and then as he hits the enemy you press R1 and it does more damage. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I thought that was cool. I was also I was watching some videos of gameplay from this game and there's a whole system we completely didn't get at all wow. which was boosting your guardian forces. Hmm. So every guardian force has the boost ability you can learn and I guess we just okay. never learned it for some reason. But if you, they have it learned when you cast them, there's like a little meter 
that pops up on the bottom right hmm. screen and you just like tap the triangle button to like raise the meter up to like boost their oh. attack. So wow. that's something there's so much stuff in this game that yeah, we I didn't completely know that. missed. But yeah, the four cells, they're trying to kidnap the Galbadian president. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, they do this like complicated thing where they switch the train cars, which yeah. was so sick. It's a cool mini game. Yeah. Um, but then they capture the president. And he ends up not being the president. He ends up being a weird like demon yeah. or something that is disguised as the president. Um, they tricked us. Yeah. Oh, actually, before this happens, though, before they get there to the forest owls, they're walking through. All the seeds are walking through like a forest. Um. And they fall asleep in the forest. Yes, yes. Does this... Let me see. This, this happens all the time. But uh, I, f- I feel like there was something else with... Because is Cypher with you here? I think Selfie is with you at this Maybe point, Maybe right? Selfie is, yeah. So Selfie is someone from Trabia Garden, which is a different yes, garden. Yes, but she was transferred to Belamp Garden. Yeah, and she's just a, a fun, happy-go-lucky gal. She She likes to do the, like... Um, like plays, she likes to set up stuff yeah. in the in the quad. Mm-hmm. She's like planning like a festival thing for, yeah. for the the school. Um, anyway, I'm I'm getting all over the place right now because I was I was trying to explain some of the combat stuff. Oh yeah. Too so Squall, his we he's got the gun blade and then his limit break. Your limit breaks activate when you have low health in this game. Yes. So if you're low on health, you'll get your ultimate attack. Squall, he just has like a big slashing attack where mm-hmm. you tap r1 a bunch in time with like a meter um quistus has blue magic she's a blue mage so yep. you get items in the world and you give them to quistus and she'll learn new abilities from enemies zell is a fighter so he has mm-hmm. basically what um what is his name sabin yeah. from final fantasy 6 where you do like a combo with him and you can do different like uh combo attacks you do like a you know, quarter circle triangle yeah. or something and that was do fun. something. Um and selfie what was oh she just like does like a heel. She has like a a yeah. group like um, I'm pretty AO, sure like, selfie thing. was like the person we used the least. We in did the game. use her the I least. I think yeah. I think we had like Squall Squall uh Quistus and Zell. Zell, like level ninety nine and yeah. Selfie was like level five. <laughs> I think I think Renoa we also used a bunch, but yeah, yeah, yeah Selfie was like nothing. Irvine we barely used too, mm-hmm. which we'll get to. But so that that's all the characters right now. Um they fall asleep in the forest Some, before they get to the forest owls. Something makes them fall asleep like Wizard of Oz style. Yeah, exactly. And then you wake up and you're playing as different characters. You're yes. playing as Laguna and Kiros and Ward, mm-hmm. who are Galbadian soldiers who are going through their own stuff. They're doing their thing. They're kind of like their own little rebellion, like just yeah. them three. Mm-hmm. Um, like they're they're just like soldiers. They're kind of sick of what they're doing and they want to fix it. Um, I believe is this when they go to the city? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, they're like in the city and Laguna is like crushing on this lounge singer mm-hmm. lady um and they have a, a night together in the hotel room yes. um and he ends up like falling asleep or something in the hotel room i don't remember yeah i, I think she leaves or um, something and we'll talk about those characters later i guess they, they come back it, it goes back and forth between these two scenes a lot yeah yeah they'll continue to like fall asleep and wake up as laguna and stuff yeah and so then so laguna falls asleep we wake back up as squall and, yeah and the party in the and then everyone like recognizes that they had the same dream Mm -hmm. when they wake up but then you go to the forest owls they kidnap the president president's not there he's actually like a demon and then you find out that cypher has been okay well (laughs) let's go it's too much it's It's too much and also this wikipedia article that i'm reading also does not explain it very well so Uh we're just kind of flying on the seat of our pants with this one guys but so there's sorceresses in this world just two just two sorceresses that are that have great power and they can do crazy stuff Mm -hmm. there was one named adel yep who is gone right now we don't really know what's going on with adel but they disappear we will know yeah we will know and then there is edia right now Mm -hmm. who is very evil but she's not like super evil right now and she's working with galbadia Mm -hmm. to do stuff and but now we find out Cypher has been like mind controlled by Edia yes. and is 
her lackey, basically. Yeah, her number one. Yeah. So it turns out Cypher kidnapped the president um, and is, like, threatening to kill him or something. Yes. Like, he gets kidnapped, like, live on television. Mm-hmm. There's, there's like, a scene. Um, and then... I forgot about that. Yeah. So Edie is working with the Galbadian president now because they've, like, kidnapped him. He's going to make her the new, like, ambassador for the nation mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and she has, like, a big uh, parade planned yes. where she's going to have, like, a big announcement where she is the new, you know, president, president or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, so what the Seeds plan on doing now is they're going to assassinate Edia. Yeah. And they Basically get, snipe her. Yeah, they're going to snipe her. And so they get from, I think, from Galbadia Garden. Who? Where is he from, Irvine? Is he from Galbadia or Trabia Garden? Yeah, he he's he is from Galbadia Garden. So you get, you go to Galbadia Garden at one point to like talk with the headmaster there mm-hmm. and stuff, and you find out some information about their stuff. And they're they're kind of hostile towards you, but they're sort of friendly too. It's like a contentious relationship. Yes. But Irvine joins your party, who's like this master sniper who is super uh, mm-hmm. smooth smooth with all the ladies, or or so he seems. Yes, exactly. So. He, we plan now on him assassinating Edia mm-hmm. with his sniper rifle during the parade. We go to the Gal. I think it's what is it the town just Galbadia or what? What is the uh, town that's what called? I was thinking I forget what the town was. I think so. I don't remember, but it is. It's it's the town near Galbadia Garden, basically. Mm-hmm. There, she's having a big parade where she's announcing her thing. One of the coolest scenes. Yeah. Like, so this is another thing about the game that I love is they're getting so cinematic mm-hmm. with the game. So they do these crazy things sometimes. Every time it happened, we just went nuts. But they would have a CG cutscene playing that's like showing stuff. Like for the parade, it's the parade float going down the walkway and, all and the dancers. These dancers. And then it just seamlessly transitions to gameplay. Yeah. Like, you don't notice it at all. There were a lot of times where it would go into us, like, and I would just move the joystick to see if I could move, and I could move. Like, it's, it was crazy. It blew my mind every time it happened. It's so cool, because it just, it, like, it's seamless. Yeah. It's it's so seamless, and they do it so much, it's amazing. That's, and I love that about this game. I, I had the thought of this uh, a bit ago, where it was like, some of the the angles of the like because it's a fixed camera yeah. angle for most of the game some of the angles seem really weird mm-hmm. and like awkward but it's because of these shots that they're awkward because yeah. some sometimes the the CG cutscenes they like have the camera go through like the area and mm-hmm. it's like going through basically all of the scenes where you're walking around and it's like, using those shots as well as the CG. Like yeah. it, it's, it's crazy how they did it. And it's like, like Final Fantasy seven had some CG cutscenes, but it's like a huge jump ahead. Mm-hmm. Like it's yeah. crazy. The quality of it. It's so good. And obviously it's really good. Cause this is the remastered version. So all the textures are really good, but I did rewatch some of these cutscenes in the original mm-hmm. game and they're still, they look amazing. Yeah, just they're the, so cool. Just the fact that they can do that seamlessly on a PlayStation one is crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's nuts. And, and I can't believe there's another PlayStation game yeah. for final fantasy that we have to get to, but oh my so God. I'm, I'm so excited for that. Yeah. But we get to the parade there's dancers. She's doing her thing. She ends up going up on stage. I think she like kidnaps um, Rinawa at some point, oh, or yes. something's going no. on where. Oh no, she... we meet the we go to meet the the president or like the military commander. Or yeah, something. who is Rinawa's dad? Yeah, or father figure. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically he traps her in the the mansion, and everyone right. else is. I think he traps her, and then. He also, tries to trap her, but she gets out. And he traps and the, Selfie, Irvine, and, and Quistus, Quistus. Or yeah. whatever your party is at the time or something. And they were supposed to, I think, like signal Irvine mm-hmm. when Edia is to show up in the like prime location. So yes. they're trying to break out of this room that got that they got locked in. But uh Rinoa is like going off on her own to try and take down Edia or something. So basically you have to you eventually get out of this this room you're trapped in and you kinda like go through like the back basically like the back rooms like sewers and stuff to yeah. try and get to a place where you can signal to to squall and irvine to shoot yeah exactly um what else was i gonna say oh yeah so i think this is where we are revealed 
uh, Rinoa's last name. I forget what it is specifically, but uh, when she's talking with her dad, oh, uh, Hartilly mm. is her last name. When she's talking with her, her dad or her father figure, it, it's revealed that her last name's Hartilly, which, if you're paying attention, was the last name of, um, I think her name was Julia, the lounge singer from yes. the Laguna Dream. Mm-hmm. So you're getting like a connection there that, that uh, Rena was like connected to Julia in some way. Um, so that's something, too. Yeah, that's um, something. But we get there. Irvine's up on this. There's like a cool CG cutscene that happens where mm. you're up on this like crazy clock tower that has yeah. like like a you know like robot guys animatronics yes. going crazy, and uh, he has cold feet. Yeah, he gets Irvine, the signal. He gets scared. He he doesn't he doesn't think he can make the shot. And then Squall gives him a pep talk. He's like, "Come on, man. You know you can. You, even if it doesn't." work it's like a signal to start the battle yeah it's like oh all right and so he shoots at edia uh did we say oh we didn't say this yet sorry edia goes up on stage announces she's the new leader and kills the president yes basically up on this big like uh this this, uh building Mm -hmm. on top of this building so that happens but yeah he goes to take the shot it goes straight at her head but she does like a magic barrier to block yeah and i believe it like goes back either it goes back or she creates some sort of ice oh well no th- yeah that's when squall and everybody else goes down to attack yeah. her he fights cypher off real quick mm-hmm. then you fight edia and then yeah edia makes like ice uh like an icicle and yeah. shoots it through squall and that's the Boom. end of disc one squall Is, might be dead yeah and that's hey that's a theory that i haven't looked into have. that theory but i think that's really like all it is is that he dies at the end of the first disc and the rest is like a dream or like the afterlife or something and i guess that could make sense yeah because there's a lot of weird stuff that happens after this first disc especially the final cutscene. oh yeah that that's so we'll get to that yeah so then squall wakes up in the hospital at balam garden again um and rena was there she like wants like a a tour of the facility Mm -hmm. because she's never been to the garden before she asks for Squall's like ring for some yes. reason, because she's gonna like make a copy of it for herself or something. Yeah, you know they st- they start falling in love. This crushed. whole game, this game is like a romance it's, story. It's basically. very like teen heartthrob, like yeah, which a lot of people I've seen online think it's cringy or something. I don't know. I thought I it was good. Cute. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it was just a little weird at the beginning with the whole Quistus thing. Yeah, but then they they explain it like they're all. I mean, it is kind of weird as well because they're yeah. all like sort of siblings. But, yeah, but yeah, they're it's not like really explained siblings. later that they were like grew up in the same orphanage. Yeah, and stuff. I don't know. We'll get there. But um, after Edia does all that shit, she also like orders like a missile strike um, to the other gardens. Yeah, Trabia Garden. and Balam, and that really freaks Selfie out because yeah. Selfie's from Trabia Garden. Yeah, so all her friends are like gonna die basically. Uh, Balam Garden, though, you're there and you actually find out somehow from uh i think it's from sid or maybe from norg mm-hmm. well so i think you find out from sid and you go down and norg is like the guy who created the garden or yeah something. he's he's like the funder or it's yeah he's like the the main funder he's, of the garden he's just kind of like down in the depths yeah he's like a big like jabba the hut kind of guy yeah he is a shumi shumai in in this world yes. which are like weird like they're like pokemon it's like another race but you can uh, it's like you yeah you can evolve like a pokemon into the moombas yeah into a moomba or into like a bigger version of the shumi which is what norg is yeah he's like a big guy but yeah there there are moombas which are these kind of like red 13 looking like it's like a tiger fiery or fiery uh moogle yeah yeah and they're running around they don't really talk that much they talk like a little bit Mm. but anyway so you f- you find out from Norg and from Sid that Balam Garden can like activate, yeah, and it lifts off into the air and mm-hmm. it's like an airship now. So you yes. have your airship in this game is just a whole school. It's like you so can go cool. back into it, go into all the areas in the school. It's so fun. Um, but that is how you avoid the missiles that mm-hmm. are coming towards Balam Garden. But the missiles do unfortunately hit Trabia Garden. So yes. Selfie is like, we gotta go. I gotta see. Like, my friends, see if anybody survives, stuff like that. 
unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately, not a lot of people did. It was all destroyed. Some of her friends are still yes, there. You meet yes. like her best friend and stuff. But most of it is destroyed. Yeah. Oh, this is another thing we haven't even mentioned at all. Triple Triad. Oh. The best, How could we forget? The best card game around. Meanwhile, while all this is happening, <laughs> we're just playing cards. Yes. So Triple Triad's a card game mini game in this game. It's it's just kind of it's hard to even describe. It's like a three by three grid. Yeah, you have cards that have four numbers on them that correspond to the different like cardinal directions mm-hmm. of the card. Each per- each person gets five cards, and you play them on the grid, and then you tr- are trying to match your number to your opponent's cards number and trying to beat it mm-hmm. to flip their card to your side. So you're you're like trading cards if they're flipping, and you need to get the most on your color on the grid at the end of the game and then you'll win um you can challenge like half of every almost, npc in yeah, the game almost basically. any like human person you can challenge and um the rules change depending on where you are different areas in the game have their own rule sets so you will play like an open game where you can see what cards they have so you can like plan mm-hmm. your moves ahead or there's the just like no you don't can see like a concealed hand yep. where you don't see it and there's different trade rules like you get all of their cards if you beat them or you just get one card or get the cards that you specifically won with yeah um there's also random that you can get sometimes where it just gives you a random assortment of your cards mm-hmm. which is really annoying cuz you have a lot of like yeah. low level cards there's like uh add or like oh yeah same and same plus. and plus and then there's uh elemental sometimes mm-hmm. spots on the board will have a little element and icon some cards have elements on them so it, it is really complicated and yeah. you can you can change the rules depending on where you're at but that is also really <laughs> yeah, complicated we tried we did that a lot because there are specific people in the world that have unique triple triad cards that you can get so um, we were tr- we were just trying to collect all the cards mm-hmm. throughout the game, and yeah, sometimes it was just so annoying. Like yeah. we had to face this one person to win their card, and they just like weren't giving it to us. Like Zell's mom took us like fifty games yeah. before she played Zell's card. I would say like this might be a stretch, but for the just all of the amount of time it took us to play the game, half of that time <laughs> was probably spent playing Triple Triad. I think that's true. Yeah, because like, w- just a lot of the randomization and like we were trying to manipulate the rules so we didn't have random because random really like fucks with everything so that definitely got tiring or or annoying but the the triple triad game itself is really really fun yeah i i think they should put it in every final fantasy oh yes i know that final fantasy 9 has a card game i don't think it's triple triad but there is also a card mini game in final fantasy 9 it's got jump rope too i remember that oh yes but where were we? We're at Trabia Garden. We find mm-hmm. out that it's been destroyed. Then we get to like the basketball court, and everyone's like hanging out in the destroyed basketball court mm-hmm. at Trabia Garden. And it is revealed, Irvine reveals that all of the party members that we have at the moment all grew up together in yes. an orphanage. Yep. And Everyone except a. Uh... Or Cypher as well, right? Was yeah, Cypher was there too. And everyone except for Rinoa was there. Yes. And um, everyone forgot about it except for Irvine. And mm-hmm. we find out it's because of Guardian Forces. I guess Guardian Forces oh, in yeah. this world like, manipulate your memories yeah. and like take your memories away. So everyone that was, it was a seed who was using Guardian Forces does not have those memories anymore. Mm-hmm. Irvine, he says, like, I barely use Guardian Forces. I only used them, like, one time. So that's why I remember And everything. he's fucking right. We barely yeah. used his ass. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's a weird thing. That's another thing people don't really like about this game. I think it's okay. Yeah. It's just, like, it comes out of nowhere. It's really, like, random, it Yeah, seems. it does seem like a gotcha, like, like we forgot to put the something here. Yeah, like, so just yeah. say Guardian Forces. Um, but it's also revealed that Edia was their caretaker at the yes matron yeah matron at the orphanage. She it's also revealed that she's married to Sid, the headmaster, and of, they created a garden together. Yeah, like the whole seed ideology, they created it because mm-hmm. it was to, it was to <laughs> stop sorceresses from like gaining power. And so at this point, you're like, well, then why did Edia do that if she's a sorceress? And so we go to the orphanage. Uh, we we travel there and we meet Edia and Sid, and it's like reveal. Oh, do we do this yet? Actually, is does this happen yet? Because no. I think there's a boss battle with Edia first. Yeah, that's the end of disc two. 
Um, fuck. I, dude, I don't remember it all. Because I'm pretty sure you fight Edia and, like, kind of beat the, the sorceress out of her. Yeah. And then the sorceress goes into, into Renoa. Yeah, yeah. It, like, possesses her. And now Edia is good again. And she's like, yeah, I was your caretaker. I'm married to Sid. We created ga- the gardens and seeds to stop this. Mm-hmm. I was possessed by a sorceress from the future. Named, Ultimicia. Yeah, named Ultimicia. Who, she's from the future, and she's trying to create something called time compression. Oh, yeah. Where all of time is happening all at once, and then Ultimicia will live outside of time so she can control everything at at her will but she doesn't have a physical body in the past right now so she needs to possess other sorceresses and uh, through this it's revealed that reno was a sorceress also man explaining this game feels like you're like a conspiracy theorist <laughs> yeah, or yeah. something. yeah like it's, it's so, so hard wild. to to compile together but now we are traveling now we got to find reno because she left she like yes. ran away because she's possessed by ultimicia so we go to the hidden nation of esther yes which is has disguised itself in this like desert area mm-hmm. so you fly the garden near it or something and it reveals itself after you get past the barrier and it's and a it's, super technological place yeah like, it's, it's like super, super advanced looking. You, like, get cool CG cutscenes when you're traveling through yep. the world and through these, like, tube systems that they have. Um, there's a mall where you can, yeah. like, shop a bunch of different shops. It's really cool. That's so cool. Um, and I guess we should talk about this, too. I, again, while all this was happening, um, sometimes the characters will fall asleep and go see Laguna mm-hmm. um, and, and, like, Heroes walk Ward. around with them they're again they're galbadian soldiers they're doing stuff they they, there's one point where you're in this like crystal cavern Mm -hmm. thing fighting off a bunch of like crazy enemies and soldiers and you're it's like meanwhile you're trying to sabotage this like basically just some production that the the army is doing yeah yeah and so they end up doing that i think but they get like really fucked up like ward gets like his like throat crushed or something Mm -hmm. so he like doesn't talk for the rest of the game and they all like jump off a cliff yeah into uh, the into the water and kind of kind of get separated a little bit for yeah. a sec then through another dream sequence or, or vision sequence whatever they are that's when uh we see laguna living in wind hill yep. where he's just kind of like the sheriff of the town it's yeah. just like a small like that was a cool cool scene yeah and it's revealed he's hanging out with rain yes rain My mom's name is rain uh well it's i think it's like technically it's like an adopted mom because i think alone was like an orphan also and and rain took care of her and then laguna came and like started a relationship with rain and raised um alone uh yeah and so then you're going to esther to talk to the president of esther to try and get to the moon (laughs) because Re- or no Renoa like c- falls into a coma that's yes, what happens yes. so you go there to try and get her out of the coma and you find this out from Elone mm-hmm. who is at uh, or at Balam Garden and she is way older than she was in the these like dreams that they've been having yes. she was like a little girl in the dreams and she's basically like an adult now and so it's revealed that Elone has the power to send people she knows back in time to like other times Mm -hmm. with people she knows and that's why when they've been going to sleep they've been basically turning into laguna and kiros and ward it's been like a a time travel-y kind of thing and so when they go to esther Mm -hmm. they go to meet up with the The like the president or whatever and they meet up with the doctor dr odine yes dr odine cure renoa and he's german Mm -hmm. Um, but then yeah and then they go to meet like the president or whatever, and it turns out to be Laguna yeah. and his two guys are Kiros and Ward. Yeah, they're like his his uh, like uh, vice presidents yeah. or whatever. And and Kiro or Laguna basically explains all of that with Alone and mm-hmm. uh, everything. But he explains what they need to do to stop Ultimicia is like get the is it the the tear or yeah, something like it's, that. It's a uh, oh, fuck. I forget. It's um, it's like this huge spaceship kind of thing that like goes yeah. over or that. Well, that's lunatic Pandora or oh, whatever. Yes. It's something where 
yeah, like, look, I don't really know what's like, going on. They, the, it, this whole part, like, disc two or, like, into disc, disc three, three right now, yeah. Like, disc three is, like, all, like, explanation. Yeah. Like, lore and just but yeah, you so have to. Much. So you have to, some, for some reason, go to the moon to cure Renoa because they have, like, a research base there or something. Mm-hmm. I don't remember why. Or, or, no, she stays on Esther, maybe? And you go up to the moon yes. for some reason? I don't, again, I do not remember why you it's go to the moon. It's very complicated. Um, but oh, oh, also another thing here, too, is they don't even really explicitly say this in the game, but if you're, like, really paying attention and you're you're picking up, like, clues, you find out, um, like, Laguna in that vision where he's hanging out with Rain, it's, or it, there's at some point you hear some backstory about Laguna, maybe it's from Ilone, where she says like, oh yeah, like my mom was was hanging out was like with Laguna. They had another kid, and then my mom died, mm-hmm. and so it's like, oh, they had another kid. You go talk to Laguna when he's president of Esther. You can play triple triad against him. Oh yes, and you can win the Squall card from him. Mm. So that is like basically the game is saying Squall is Laguna's son. Mm. So, and that's also why Elone was with them in the orphanage back in the day and when you see visions of the orphanage back in the day um squall is always calling for sis yes. who is alone so they they are brother and sister because he's basically uh, laguna's son and so Boom. that's also another thing there's another stu like a stupid fan theory online that um the renoa and squall are like brother and sister i've heard that i don't believe that yeah because there was the one time that laguna spent the night in uh uh reno was mom's like hotel room because she was the lounge singer oh. but it, it spl- explicitly in that dream sequence though he like falls asleep before they do yeah. anything like while they're talking he falls asleep so yeah. i don't know that's a dumb fan theory that i don't love but why would you want that to yeah be i don't know it's <laughs> stupid but Anyway, you get to the moon. You fly up to the moon for some all these, reason. All these games, I swear, like when they don't know what to do, they're like, let's just go to let's, the moon. Yeah, we're going to the moon. Yeah. You go there and you find out that Sorceress Adel is being trapped in like a floating prison orbiting the moon. Yes. The, and uh, she's just like out there, the sorceress. And Laguna kind of explains mm-hmm. what happened, why that is. Yeah. Basically, he trapped Adel. Uh, because Adel was like, again, like possessed by Ultimicia. Yeah, gonna destroy the world. Yeah, and what happens is Renoa is on the moon. I get, I, I believe she comes with you. Mm-hmm. I don't remember why. Again, maybe, maybe it was because we needed to like wake her from the coma. We needed to go to the moon. She wakes up, but is possessed. Yeah, she's possessed by Ultimicia. She's fucking shit up. She goes outside and like interacts with Adel. And Adel becomes Ultimicia's new vessel. And is freed. Yeah, and then activates the Lunar Cry. That's what it was, which, yeah. Which was, there's a, on the moon, there's a bunch of monsters hanging out on the moon, mm-hmm. and Adel does a spell that, like, shoots them down to Earth. And that's how we use the Lunatic Pandora, right? Yeah, 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 that's, we'll get to that. <laughs> then Rena was, like, lost in space, and Squall has to go save her. Very cool moment. It's such a cool moment. You're like, there, there's like one point where you're like a fir- in a first person view, yeah, floating out in space, and you have to like go towards Renoa and like catch her as she's floating very, away. Very cool. Very romantic. Mm-hmm. It's so good. And then a big ship like flies out of nowhere, the um, Ragnarok, mm-hmm. which is just oh, like yes. a spaceship that Squall lands on with Renoa. Um, it ends up that like these ships were the things that brought Adel to the moon mm-hmm. or something. So they get in there, um, you know, they have a nice time. They're going back down to Earth, but then everyone on Earth has found out that Renoa did all this crazy shit and is a sorceress. So someone like radios you and says, "We're gonna arrest her as soon as you guys get to Earth." Yeah. So then you have like a nice moment in the in the spaceship where they're just like cuddling each other, and there's a song that plays oh. which blew my mind. It was so such good. a beautiful song. It's such a good song. It's "Eyes on Me" um, by mm. who was this? I just realized Faye Wong. I think we might have forgotten like a whole sequence. Oh, did we? We we haven't even talked about Fisherman's Horizon. Oh yeah, Fisherman's Horizon. Just a really cool location. It's yeah. in the middle of the ocean. It's mm-hmm. it's basically it was just made so 
as like the hub everyone can come through. Yeah. Um, but but there's this really cool fight like sequence between the two gardens that we oh, t- we, we forgot to yeah, talk we about. Yeah, forgot that, about that. That was one of my most oh my favorite God. moments of the game. I forget exactly when it happens in the game. It's tor- kind of in the it's, middle. Yeah, it's in the middle. I think it's like disc two or something. But oh, how but do we forget about when, this? When we speak of like the CG cutscenes and all that, there is this one specific moment where yeah. the two gardens are about to collide with each other, mm-hmm. and like the the opposing garden has like these guys in motorcycles or like jetpacks or yeah, something they, that yeah, they bust jet out packs. and. There's a scene where one of them busts through this window into the classroom, and it's like right into the fight. Yeah, and it's so good. And then later on, uh, Squall like jumps onto a guy that has a jetpack, and you're like fighting in the air, and it's one of the coolest moments yeah. in the whole game. There's like a CG like stuff. Yeah, like cutscene behind, you, cut scene behind you while you're playing. It's crazy. That that whole sequence, I can't believe we forgot about it. Yeah, yeah it's so crazy because Galbadia Garden also takes off and is flying through the air. Like, yes like Balam Garden and you have yeah they have a battle in midair Cypher's controlling Galbadia Garden um and yeah he sends those people and yeah that that scene where they break through the glass is insane so good it's it's just the CG cutscene they bust through the glass and on the other side of the glass is just the game you're it's like, like walking the, around in it's a like classroom. when the when the glass shatters and you start the fight like yeah. that's when they bust through the glass and then uh there's also like another part where you and Renoa are like running um through this like battlefield all the students are fighting each other yes. and yeah you're like running you, you you are controlling the characters running through and in the background it's just like a hundred people like just explosions yeah. going off it's so crazy it's crazy how they could fit that into that game yeah well that makes sense why it was like four discs yeah <laughs> And then, oh, there was another thing at Fisherman's Horizon, which was, uh, like, Selfie organizes a concert Yes, or and that's also where where the song happens a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And they, they get to dance uh, Squall and Renoa. Yeah, but then, uh, like, Squall, like, ends up, like, being a dick or something. Yes. And they, they, like, separate. But um, the song also play the song Eyes on Me also plays during the Laguna dream sequence where he's talking with, or, uh, having a crush on... Um, the singer. Yeah, the singer, Julia. Mm-hmm. It's the song that she's playing in the in the lounge, but you actually like hear the lyrics once we were on the Ragnarok with mm-hmm. with Rinoa and Squall. It's so good, an amazing song. Yeah, the song like the lyrics are about a lounge singer who is falling in love with like someone who comes to the bar to watch them perform mm-hmm. and stuff. So it's like amazing, like thematic connection to the story yeah. with laguna and julia and then obviously they're like the son and daughter of those characters they're also falling in love so mm-hmm. it's so good uh eyes on me when it when this game came out was the in japan the number one song from a video game and of all time i also i was looking i was listening to the song on youtube yeah. It's actually in Chinese. Yeah, yeah. She Fei Wang's a Chinese singer. And so like I, I was reading the comments on the video and it was like talking about how it's it like it was wild that like a Chinese song was so so popular, like yeah. from a video game even. Yeah. Like in Japan. Yeah. Specifically. It, like that's so wild. It's so good. But yeah, this this song for a long time, or I guess not for a long time, was uh, the number one song from a video game in Japan. It was like the biggest song ever. Yeah. Um, but it, it, I guess it only technically lasted two years. Do you wow. know what the next biggest song from a video game was in Japan? So when was this year? 1999. 2001. Um, was it like Kingdom Hearts something? Absolutely. Simple and Clean. Yeah, Simple and Clean. Yeah. Simple and Clean then beat Eyes on Me by being the number one video game song in Japan. As it should. Simple and Absolutely. Clean is a perfect song. A banger. A banger. I mean, oh my God. in my opinion, though, Sanctuary is better. Sanctuary but is amazing. Simple and Clean is great. Eyes on Me, a great song. Give it a listen. There's uh, Eyes on Me, I, I listened to it so much after that scene. Yes. And it's so good. There's like a there's like a flute solo yes. in it that's like so crazy. And it's, it's you know, it's composed by Nobu Imatsu. He really went off with that. I keep, Fei Wong kills it. I keep saying this. They need to make a streaming service for mu- video game music. Yeah, yeah. Like, they need to do it. It's like I know a they billion do, dollar idea. I know they do have some Final Fantasy stuff on, on Spotify, yes. but it's not everything. Nintendo, get with it. Yeah. Like, make something, because they, they have lots of good songs. Yeah. Going back to the story, you land back on Earth. The soldiers like kidnap Rinoa to because she's a dangerous yeah, sorceress. Basically, to like put her in like a cryogenic 
chamber yeah. or something like that. But Squall meets up with the rest of the crew, and they're all like, we're not going to have any of that. We're going to yeah. go save her. So they do go save her. She's, like, being captured by Adel. She's, like, fused into Adel or mm-hmm. something. Yes. So there's this cool boss battle where you have to attack Adel, but you have to make sure you're not doing, um, like, multi-targeted attacks because mm-hmm. it can't attack Rinua too, and she can die. And Adel kind of, like steals life from yeah. Renoa throughout the fight. It, it's a pretty cool fight and like a pretty cool uh, system for it. Oh, yeah. Um, but then you end up defeating Adel. Um, what happens at this point? Shit. Like, you go into Lunatic Pandora, I think, which is this... this what the fuck even is it? it I don't it's remember. Just like, it's like a big t- building. It's like a huge pillar that leads up to like a big uh, mansion. Yes. And so it's also revealed too when you're running through it. This was the like crystal place that Laguna was in Mm -hmm. before. Like I guess they were working on uh, Lunatic Pandora in the past Mm -hmm. and he was trying to put a stop to it, but he obviously didn't. And it's like when you go into the the main mansion part, it's Mm -hmm. like each, each part has these kind of like big beast enemies. Yeah. And like... They're, I think they correspond to like colors, like they're each a certain color, and you have to kill them. Oh no, that was in or the, no, that uh, was that fighting was in the Odin. Ragnarok. That was in the Ragnarok. You had to do that. Oh man, when we got the Shit. ship, all this stuff is. Oh yeah, that yeah. was the Ragnarok. But okay, oh, there's so much we uh, there's so much we haven't mentioned. Oh, so we're gonna no. put Lunatic Pandora on pause because we also got to talk about Shumi Village. Oh my gosh, Shumi Village. You go there. It's these Shumi people, and they're like, "We love Laguna. We're building a statue for yes. Laguna or whatever," and you have to help them build the statue. It's really oh cool. God. You learn about the Shumi like lore and how they become Moombas and stuff. Um, you there's a dr- an Ultima draw point there that you yes. have to go to all the time because you gotta get gotta get Ultima, it. which is Max another thing we, we didn't mention. There's draw points in the world where, like we said in battle, you can draw magic from enemies, but there mm-hmm. are also just little points in the world that you can draw magic from. Yep. And so that's like one of the big ones is in Shumi Village. There's an Ultima draw point and you have to pay like 500 gil to get it Mm -hmm. but you have like infinite money oh my god there's like so another system we didn't even talk about is there's a rank for your seed uh like your seed like exam rank yeah so you can do tests i think you can also like fight enemies yeah fighting enemies ranks you up too um basically the higher the rank you are the more pay you get Every, every a couple hours or it's, something. It's like every, I think it's depending on your steps in, in the world. So like okay. every like couple hundred steps, you get like a payday and if based you're, on your rank. if you're a high rank, you just basically have infinite money. Like yeah. you get like $30,000 for a paycheck. <laughs> or like every, like, yeah, like every hour basically. And, and if we're, if, and we were playing the, the remaster, if you're doing times three, three times speed, speed yeah. like it happens all the time. Yeah. But Anyway, so what were you going to say? Yeah, so I rem- I kind of remember Lunatic Pandora. Yeah. So you get to the top, uh, uh, and there's this mansion, and you have to split your party between right, uh, yeah. three and three. And it's kind of like a whole puzzle. You're trying to get to the end, get the whole party, mm-hmm. all six people to-, to the end, by going, doing, you know, big puzzles. There's yeah. a chandelier that drops and all that. You have to lift it back up. Just a bunch of random stuff, basically, to just get to... Ultimicia. Ultimicia. Oh, so this this is the thing that I, re- I remember now. So it is like the ultim- uh, Lunatic Pandora is this like big building that's built out of a crystal pillar. Uh-huh. Uh, so I'm reading this from the fa- Final Fantasy Wikipedia mm-hmm. right now. Uh, the crystal pillar, it fell from Earth uh, on Earth from the moon during a lunar cry like way back in the day, like decades ago. Yeah. So they fashioned it into this building, and what Lunatic Pandora does is it induces a lunar cry. So if it mm. gets to a specific spot in the world, which is called uh, Tears Point, yes, if it's hovering above Tears Point, it will start the lunar cry. So that's why all the monsters like fell from the moon to Earth is because Lunatic Pandora, the, uh, the Galbadians, mm-hmm. and Ultimecia or whatever were uh, controlling Lunatic Pandora, bringing it to Tears Point to start the lunar cry so that's what it's for it's like the vessel from which all the monsters enter earth okay but yeah anyway you get to the mansion uh you fight ultimicia um it's also before you even get there laguna gives you this speech he's like giving everybody like this this uh pep talk about what's about to happen so ultimicia her plan let's talk about ultimicia's plan oh my god Ultimicia is going to 
possess Elone because mm-hmm. Elone has these like time travel, like weird time travel powers. Yeah. So Ultimisi is going to possess Elone to induce time compression to compress all of time together mm-hmm. at once. But our plan is to let that happen, but then, like, if Rinoa comes and gets possessed by Ultimisia yeah. or something, it's I don't it's it's, it's a very a, weird it's complicated like a, plan. a roundabout way of like defeating Ultimisia, but like yeah. it's basically like you have to make her plan go through, but like halfway through the plan going through, you mm-hmm. have to like trick her. Yeah. It's so, very complicated. Yeah. And then, um, so you get to fight Ultimisia, then time compression happens, but that was meant to happen. That's like part of the plan. Laguna tells you that in order to find each other in time compression, you need to, you know, remember your friends, remember your, your, your love and your friendship. Your friends or your, your courage. Power. Yeah, exactly. Friends are literally power. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you keep them in your mind, you won't get separated, basically. Yep. So there's, like, this really cool cutscene that happens after you defeat Ultimisia where, like... It, it's i mean it's, it's it's nuts it's like you said when we were playing it's like that part from the episode of spongebob when squidward's in <laughs> yeah. like the negative dimension yeah, alone. all yeah all alone like S- squall's like all alone and then like eventually he's like wandering through an endless desert yeah um he sees visions of Renoa that are all like warped and messed up it's crazy blurred looking. yeah it's so cool but then they eventually get back together they're together again and uh or I guess before that happens, Squall gets because again, like time compression's happening, so all of time is happening at once. So he gets sent back to the orphanage when he was a kid, mm-hmm. and oh my, him God. and Ultimisia go back. I think because Ultimisia is dying. You defeat Ultimisia in the boss battle, yes. but she's like dying slowly. Um, you see little Squall running off, and then Matron, aka Edia, is there like going after him in the past. But, uh, and you talk ult- to Matron. Yeah, you talk to Matron, and then Matron agrees that to like absorb Ultimisia into herself mm-hmm. to stop Ultimisia from doing like crazy stuff with time compression. So then it's like obviously revealed that like this whole thing is a time loop basically yeah. because this is where Edia then gets possessed by Ultimisia to go on to like do all do all the stuff that happened in this game mm-hmm. and then it's just gonna keep like looping it just like happens that. forever um but squall also gives edia the idea for seed and the gardens yes. and stuff because the gardens were specifically made to stop the sorceresses so he needs to give her that idea so that so this can happen so it that is the time straight loop up can... a time loop <laughs> yeah. like every part of it is a time loop and then but once... our but our heroes do leave the time loop at yes. some point but it is still like an infinite loop that's happening in yes. the past and and basically like it it sort of ends kind of with the time loop still going like yeah. this crazy cutscene of like all these it's like every cutscene basically happening at the same yeah, time yeah yeah um like it's always phasing in and out the effects are crazy mm-hmm. um it's like both like reminiscing but it's also like someone made like a vhs like yeah th- like a slideshow of everything like it's going by so it's, fast it's so crazy yeah and then and then like you see the, the renoa like flashes where she's all blurry and stuff and it's yes. like supposed to symbolize like squall trying to remember her to do like what laguna said and keep his friends in his thoughts mm-hmm. so it's like he's trying to remember her but it's so blurry and he can't remember her face but then they eventually do find each other and they're out of the time loop mm-hmm. because they found all their friends again they all get back together um, they have a big party at the garden. And yes. you see like in the end credits, there's like a funny little like handheld camera vi- like yeah. CG cutscene where like selfies recording the party on like a camera and then yeah. Irvine gets the camera at some point. And, and uh, my favorite part is when it shows Zell, he's like oh, eating yeah. a big sandwich. No, and no, he- no, no. So this is, this was a plot point in the game that I remember was the lunchroom at Balam Garden is mm. like, we're having, we have a new like food on the menu it's hot dogs oh, everybody yes. come get your hot dogs and so you can go to the lunchroom all the this. time and there's a big line for the hot dogs and zell's always in the line 
And every time it gets to Zell, the lunch person is just like sold out of hot dogs. And you can yes. do that. Like you can see that happen multiple times in the oh, game. It's I so funny. That. So then, yeah, at the, at the end credit scene, Zell's finally eating the giant plate of hot dogs. He, he also mentions throughout the game that he has like a crush on this girl. Oh, yeah. And and so he's eating the hot dogs and in she's... front of the girl and he chokes on the hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's they so have to funny. like give him like Quistus gives him like a Heimlich maneuver <laughs> yeah. or something. So funny. And then yeah, we see we see all all our friends. There's like it, it like leaves it up into the up in the air as to if Renoir and uh, Squall survive the time loop yeah. or not. But then the camera pans over to uh, Renoir and she's like out on the balcony talking to someone. But mm-hmm. then the camera battery dies. Um, but then at the very end of the credits, we do see that she is talking to Squall. Mm-hmm. And they're flying away, and it ends on this shot of the garden in front of the moon. It's so cool. Such a good, and, and I think the song plays again at, yeah. for the credits. Oh, yeah, it does, yeah. That's it. That's the game, man. Such what a an game. amazing game. Like, and there's so much more to even talk about. Like, all the all the Guardian forces are so cool. Every summon. Yeah, there's, there's a couple new ones. I think Doom Train. There um, was a... Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Pandemona. Yeah, Pandemona. E, uh, Eden, Eden, which was crazy. It's yes, so that one cool. was one of the craziest animations. It like so fires far. the enemy into like a black hole yeah. in deep space and stuff. Um, so cool. Quetzalcoatl is re- replacing Rama basically because yeah. it's the new lightning summon. Um, I think I think, and then all the other like classics are here. Yeah, Your Shiva, Ifrit, got Carbuncle, got you know, Odin. You know we got Odin, but Odin actually oh, yeah. wasn't. Uh, a guardian force he was just kind of like a thing that would randomly pop up sometimes yeah in, in a battle he would gilgamesh ra- as well right? yeah so in a battle he would randomly pop up to just defeat the enemies in one hit but in the final time you fight cypher mm-hmm. odin shows up to do his attack and then cypher like does the attack back to him and kills odin yeah it's but a then, sick moment but then gilgamesh gilgamesh shows up to replace odin basically and like avenge yes. him so Gilgamesh takes out Cypher, and then Gilgamesh is like the new Odin That's for funny. the end of the game. There's also a special, a couple special summons. There's like the Chocobo summon, which mm. you have to use Gasol Greens to summon. You can't just, it's yes. not like an equipable Guardian Force. And what, what was that thing you were talking about oh, that yeah. connects the game? We'll have, to, we'll have to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the other thing was the Phoenix Pinion that summons yes. Phoenix. That revives all your party members and stuff. Again, it wasn't. It's not like an equipable guardian force, but it is. You can use an item kind to do it. Kind of a summon. Well, there is also a mini game um, called Chocobo World that was connected yes. to this game. It's on our list of games, but it's, we're not going to rank it separately because it is technically a part of Final Fantasy VIII. Mm-hmm. But we'll watch a video. I, I couldn't figure out a way for us to play it. Because what it was, was in Japan, there's something called a pocket station, Mm -hmm. which uh, from my knowledge is just like the, uh, like how the Dreamcast had that little removable thing where you could play like a little like Tamagotchi game on your Dreamcast games. It was a thing that the PlayStation had in Japan that connected to your PlayStation games. And if the game had it, you'd be able to play a little mini game on it for the game. We should try and find one, like a pocket station. Yeah. And, like, I'm sure you'd have to have a Japanese PlayStation. Yeah. But we should well, try and get them. So one thing about it, too, is if you get Final Fantasy VIII on Steam, which is not the remaster version of oh, Final okay. Fantasy VIII, you can play Chocobo World on that. But I found that out too late because, like, you, you would have to get, like, halfway through the game to, to get be able to, to get to Chocobo World because you have to unlock Chocobos in the game. There but, aren't very many Chocobos in the game. Yeah, no, not really. Um, but for Chocobo World, it's just a little mini game where you run around. You unlock Chocobos in Final Fantasy VIII, and then you can unlock this mini game where you play as a Chocobo, mm-hmm. just running around like an overworld map. Sometimes you'll encounter uh, like random events that happen. You can do battles. Yeah. You can find items. The story is like, there's a female Chocobo that got kidnapped by like a demon or something and mm. you have to go find her. So you just run around this little map and there's little dots you yeah. can see. So the blinking dot is where you're at. Yeah, and then the dots are like events or things in the world. So okay. you can either get a random encounter and then if you fight an enemy, you can level up your Chocobo with like level up your attack oh. or your defense. 
or sometimes you'll find an item that you can equip to your chocobo to give them more attack, more defense, or yeah. you can find items for Squall. And mm -hmm. then if you connect your pocket station to your PlayStation, the items get sent to your inventory in Final Fantasy VIII. Wow. So there's like unique items that you can only get in Chocobo worlds that get sent to Final Fantasy VIII, but in the remaster, those items, you can just get them other ways in the game. Okay. So we were able to get them anyway. This is really cool. Yeah, it's just a fun little like little mini game that you can do yeah. on the pocket station. So it's cool how it's like kind of a three D map, but they've made it in two D. Yeah. And let's see if we can get to uh, a part where you do like a random encounter. Yeah. It looks. Yeah, there we oh go. yeah, there we go. Whoa, that's kind of spooky. Yeah. So you have like an ATB timer on the bottom wow. that does your uh, attacking for you. It's really cool. It seems really neat. That is really cool. And then, yeah, you'll unlock just some cool, like, items and stuff to give Squall. Wow. But, yeah, that's Chocobo World. Um, just a little mini game. Yeah, that's really it. cool looking. So you can check it out on Steam if you have the game on Steam. Yeah. Is there anything else about the game that we f didn't mention? Yeah, I mean, probably, but... I mean, I think... Should we go to the rankings? I guess so. Like, like I, I just... I don't... I really don't know what else... I, I don't know what else to say about this game. Like it's we we said everything I think I want to say. Yeah, we like, mentioned all the little stuff. I think everything else I have to say is just like about where it is on the ranking yeah. how I feel about it. So let's do it. Let's get to the ranking. Uh let me pull up my list of rankings. Um now so final so we're going to move to first our most enjoyable list. And I guess, are we going to say it on, on three? Straight. One, two, three. Number, number one. one. This is number one. Straight to the top. This game, I... I maybe, had so much fun. If you've never played this game, go play this go fucking play game. It. It's so good. Everyone, like, yes, there's the, the thing people say, seven is the best. Yeah. This game... Some people say six is the best. This game, in my mind, is like seven, but greater. Like, yeah. It's everything that is great about seven, but better. better. Yeah, exactly. It's like everything they were trying to do in Final Fantasy VII with like unique magic systems. The cinematics. And, yeah, cinematics. Like It's all so much it's better It's all in this done game. better. It's so crazy. The cutscenes are way better. The story... Like, well, the story of Final Fantasy VII is really good, too. Yes. It's, it, I think the story's on the same level, but like the magic system, the junctioning system, I find so much more interesting yes. than Materia. And rewarding. Like, yeah. very rewarding. It's just... Yeah, all around, I think... Yeah, Final Fantasy VIII... It, Final Fantasy VII walks, so Final Fantasy VIII yes, can run. Yes, straight up. It's so... It's amazing. Like, it's you can't... So you wouldn't get here without Final Fantasy VII. It is like a foundational mm. game, obviously. It brought jrpgs or rpgs from japan into the mainstream in america yep. like it's really important but final fantasy is just a hundred times just, better it's insane i and i was not expecting that too like, yeah i was expecting to go into this and think it, it wasn't it was, better than seven yeah i was but, i was going i was expecting to go in and be like oh this is like a neat little thing yeah. but it's kind of weird but no this game's it is incredible amazing. It, it blew my mind <laughs> one of Truly one of the best games ever made. I think, like, just the final cutscene of this game is better than, like, Final Fantasy Legends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. Like, I would watch that cutscene for an hour rather than play Final Fantasy Legend for yes. an hour. It's so it's good. It's so good. It has to be number one, at least where we're at right now. They're like, And even, like, the only, the only annoying stuff in the game, too, is, like, the randomness of Triple Triad, yeah. which is, like... Whatever you can skip triple triad and, like, altogether. Triple triad is so much fun, even with the annoyingness of trying to get a specific card. Yeah, exactly. So it's amazing. It's number one on most enjoyable for sure. I, I would even go as far to say triple triad is a better mini game than <laughs> any of the mini games in Final Fantasy VII. I think so. Yeah. May maybe not Fort Condor. I love oh, Fort, yeah, Fort Condor. Fort Condor is great. But, but like, but like every. All Every golden, golden saucer, saucer mini game, like Triple Triad, beats those hands down. Absolutely, it's incredible. Just a great game, number all one. around, number one. And then most Final Fantasy. Now this is kind of interesting because I think this one's not going to be as high. I thought so as well. Final Fantasy. Well, maybe it will be. I don't know, because Final Fantasy VIII is really, I guess, Final Fantasy at this point. Let's break it down. Mm -hmm. At this point in our process. What do we think Final Fantasy is? So I think when when I first or when we first started this, yeah. I was thinking it was more medieval. Now yeah. now instead of medieval, 
I would say it's more like, uh, like what's the word like, uh, industrial. Yeah, it's like, like sci-fi it's, it's, fantasy. Yeah, kind it, of it's stuff. it's more like a, an industrial like kind of thing, not medieval. Yeah, like it's it's like steampunk, grungy. Yeah, yeah exactly. So like, I, I I definitely get that a lot from this game. Um, yeah. and but but the one thing I was thinking, no crystals. Yeah, there's like sort of crystal. There, there's like Lunatic Pandora is like a big crystal or whatever. But like yeah, no, no crystals, no like straight up crystals exactly. of like of like elements. Yeah, or whatever. elemental crystal. But I think this game does have like a lot of stuff as we're going through these games that Final Fantasy is defined by. I think mm-hmm. I mentioned this when we were playing the game. It's something that I didn't realize was such a big deal. I know we've said it before as being an aspect of Final Fantasy, mm-hmm. but these games really are about the summons like yes i didn't like i knew summons we said this in the past summons are a part of final fantasy but they really are like very like, central to the stories of these games so like final fantasy 6 they're really important yes. in this game they're super important to the story i would say like final or summons like were part of final fantasy at the beginning but now like summons are final fantasy yeah like, exactly like, and even looking ahead you know final fantasy 16 that just came out is hugely yes. about summons. And I've played 10. It's huge about yeah. summons too. Like so I think now when we're going into more games if they don't have summons mm-hmm. that's a big like red flag or yeah. like that's a big thing that would make it not very Final Fantasy. Like I do think summons are like a big part of it. And I also think Final Fantasy is progressing it is always progressing to be more cinematic and more yes. movie like. That's something I haven't noticed until now too was like I think that is like a big part of Final Fantasy is being cinematic. Mm-hmm. I, they've every game has been building on like bigger set pieces yes. and crazier f- battles and cooler cutscenes. So like it just keeps getting more and more movie like, more mm-hmm. grand. So and I, and I'm sure in the in the early days if they could have done stuff like that they would have. Oh yeah, like, I mean they even like they you were, had pandemonium like yeah. that shit was crazy and they were really like push they were really pushing the boundaries. They are like always. I feel like pushing the limits of the systems that these games come out on. I know nowadays it's like video game systems are so high powered that it's like almost impossible to really push them to their limits. But like you can see it in this game. Like it's crazy that Final Fantasy VIII is on the same system as like Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Glover. Yeah. It's it's like the cutscenes are blowing my mind in this game. And like Final Fantasy VI was on the super nintendo which yeah. is i think even more crazy God. to think about than that this game a, that's that's with, another like, the thing fucking, like, with the fucking uh the opera scene in final fantasy oh 6 is like how did they fucking do that on the super nintendo for real it's like it's like another thing with like Star Fox. like how do oh, they yeah. do that on the yeah, super that's nintendo nuts. like they're they square enix like is constantly trying to one-up themselves and yeah. i think they do it every time absolutely so that, yeah, that's like another thing about Final Fantasy is like innovating the RPG genre, like changing how RPG systems work. Mm-hmm. And they do that all the time too with like the materia and then in this game with, with the junctioning. Yep. Uh, Final Fantasy VI had like Magisite. Like they're always like changing it up, change, like making jobs a thing, mm-hmm. like job system. So I don't know. I feel like in this day and age, I feel like my idea of what Final Fantasy is is progressing to in a way to where... I think Final Fantasy VIII will be pretty high on the list. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it'll be number one. Because yeah, like probably. right now we have Final Fantasy VI on, at number one, which I think, I think is still number I one. I would say that definitely stays. Tactics? Yeah, I'd say Tactics I'd say is it. probably more defining of Final Fantasy than Final Fantasy VIII. Final Fantasy V? I think that would still have to stay. That, yeah. that one is very, like like we said in many other episodes, it's like three Final Fantasy games in one. That is true. That is very but, true, yeah. But I think we could put it right below. Right below. Yeah, above Final Fantasy 3. I think that could be the perfect spot for I it. I think so, yeah. So, you know, Final Fantasy 8, most enjoyable, number one. Mm-hmm. But Final Fantasy 8 on the most Final Fantasy list is going to be our new number four yes. most Final Fantasy game, which is crazy. It's I we rank, I feel like we ranked seven really low. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we're not changing our rankings yeah, right now. Change. It's off the dome, off the cuff. May- maybe once we get to, like, 25 or something, we could we could readjust. <laughs> Reevaluate. But, no, I, I want to keep it as it is. Yeah, we're good right now. So, yeah, Final Fantasy VIII, I think, really is a big 
defining part of Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, number four. I think that's I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Good place to put it. On, honestly, I could. I feel like I could argue it being more Final Fantasy than five, mm-hmm. but you know, I, I'm not. I'm not married to that argument yes. really. So I think I think it's good to put Final Fantasy eight at number four mm-hmm. on our most Final Fantasy list. And that's the sh- that's the episode. That's it. We next time. Um, I don't really know what's gonna happen next time. Yeah. because So what's coming up next is there's a, a run of three Chocobo games. Mm-hmm. There's one Chocobo Racing, which was released in America. So we have like an official translation version of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a racing game. I love racing games. Oh yeah. Um, and then there is there are two other Chocobo games that in Japan were released in a pack with Chocobo oh. Racing. So there's Chocobo oh. Racing, Dice D Chocobo, okay. and Chocobo Stallion. Ooh. So Chocobo Racing is a racing game. Chocobo Stallion, from what I can tell, is like basically if you took the Chocobo breeding and racing from Final Fantasy VII and fleshed it out to a whole game. Okay. So you'll be like raising Chocobos and like feeding them oh. and then racing them. And then Dice D Chocobo is like I don't know if you've played Fortune Street before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's like Fortune Street. It's like, uh, like Mario Party, Mario kinda. Party, or like the command boards in Kingdom Hearts: yeah. Birth by Sleep. It's one of those, but with chocobos. Okay. So the, those will be interesting because those two were not released in America, and I don't really think there's like an American trans, like a fan oh, translation. Yeah. So we'll try and play those as much as we can. We might get pretty far. But yeah, we'll see. I'm thinking. We haven't played these games yet, so I don't know how much content is in them, but I'm thinking maybe next episode will just be all three yeah. of those games in one full episode, but we will rank them individually. I I can't, I mean, obviously I don't know, but I, I can't imagine that Chocobo <laughs> Racing has a story. <laughs> yeah, I think it le- does. Or at least a story that's like 30 hours, like a, fi- yeah. like a mainline Final Fantasy game. I'm sure it'll be quick. I'm sure yeah. we'll be through these quick, and then... Like, yeah, I think it'll probably be just one episode with the full collection, mm-hmm. and we'll rank them all separately. But then after that, after all these three Straight Chocobo to games, nine. it's nine. And I'm so excited. I, I, yeah, I, I don't Especially know much. with our minds being blown by Final Fantasy VIII, I'm just like... Last it, Final Fantasy game on the PS1. Yeah, they prob- they had to have gone out with a banger. They they gotta have... They, they probably went off. Yeah. As they do. I'm, so I'm hyped up... Uh, as we said in the beginning of the episode, go fucking play this oh, game. Go, go play, play Final Fantasy VIII. Go play them all. Yeah, go play them all, but especially Final Fantasy VIII, I think, is it's the best one. Yes. As we've determined. It's the best one. And that's all for now. We'll be back with Chocobo, the Chocobo Collection. Oh, yes. Next time. What's we got to get a sign-off for this show. I know. This ep- we don't have show. a sign-off. What is our sign-off? Uh... Ki- uh Chris, crystal up. Chris, <laughs> crystal up. Crystal up, my friends. All right. We are here today talking with games journalist and avid Final Fantasy VIII lover, Ashley O. Hi, Ashley. How are you doing? Hello. Uh, I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, so we're here to talk about Final Fantasy VIII, but before we get into that, I wanted to ask you kind of the general thesis of our show um, what, in your opinion, does Final Fantasy even mean? What what is what is the definition of Final Fantasy to you? Oh wow! Um, you know, at this point, it's it's super hard to say because I feel like it branched out into something totally different. But um, I feel like the best way to describe it is kind of this collection of sweeping epic tales in um, Japanese role playing game history i mean i guess it's ongoing but um Mm -hmm. it really kind of specializes so much in this like um i don't know this like mix of like these highly developed detailed worlds that kind of straddle the line between like fantasy and um and with this one eight uh, like a little bit of Mm sci-fi um but they're kind of all over the place uh i'd have to say it's very weird to try to um explain it because they're not all the same at yeah. all yeah yeah that's i mean I, that's almost in my opinion a definition of it in and of itself is they're always innovating it they're always changing what it means every time so it's it is really hard to pinpoint what it even means yeah i mean i think like it definitely 
it focuses a lot on like the hero's journey. I mean, I know that's mm-hmm. like pretty generic and you could say yeah. that about a lot of things like Zelda probably is even more so hero journey, but mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I, there's something like kind of uh, like with their group di- dynamics, you know, like with their party system and everything. So you always have this cast of characters that kind of seems like remotely anime-ish to me, you know, like yeah. everyone has this crew and they're all like going towards some, lofty goal with these adventures so it kind of is like that a little though i would not describe final fantasy like as very anime if that makes sense yeah yeah if anything it seems like they're trying to be like i mean especially in this era that we're in right now with the podcast they are just trying to make movies just like a just a straight up movie a lot of the time oh yeah Uh, i think I think especially with, like, the more recent ones, like, I think I know with 16, like, mm-hmm. um, was super inspired by God of War. So there's, oh, yeah. like, huge, like, big, I feel like almost, like, Marvel-esque um, influences now mm-hmm. um, that are on, like, the more recent ones. But in terms of, like, the older ones, um, like, 7 and, and 8, like, in the PlayStation era, I don't know. I feel like that was just starting to carve out, like, what um like an rpg could really be if that makes sense like besides uh just kind of rescuing the princess in the castle which is like basically the first like two or three yeah yeah final fantasies is like just that but they they like you said they iterate on it and um it kind of all they all turn into their own special weird being yeah i agree and speaking of that let's talk about final fantasy 8 so what is it? Is this your is this your favorite Final Fantasy? I'm not really even sure. I know you, like I said, you're one of the bigger <laughs> Final Fantasy VIII defenders that I follow online. But is it a favorite? I of think. Yours? Yeah, I mean, it's it's so hard to say. It definitely, I, I would say it is. I mean, mm-hmm. I, and I only have some hesitation because, like, nine is really up there for me. Oh, um, okay, that's interesting. I feel like, for me. Um, eight is my favorite, but if I had to recommend a Final Fantasy to somebody who had never played before, I would tell them to start with nine because I think wow. that's like the most, um, like the most like approachable and just like overall, um, like solid all around game. Whereas like with eight, I even though it is my favorite and I do love mm-hmm. it, like I'm very well aware that there are a lot of. <laughs> flaws um, yeah yeah and some pitfalls that that can and some of that is like technical some of it is not um and so i think like i appreciate that and i can kind of look past um certain things that i (laughs) I, understandably if you were new to the franchise you know you would Mm -hmm. be like why do i have to deal with this like i want to skip past all this that's that's so interesting to hear because i obviously that game is coming up for us we're playing everything in release order so um, I've never, I've, I think I've played the first like two hours of that game when I was a kid, Final Fantasy IX I'm talking about, sorry. Uh, uh-huh. And so I, I mean, it's very fascinating to hear, like you're not the only person I've heard say that Final Fantasy IX is their favorite and I truly know almost nothing about it. So that's exciting for me. Oh my gosh, I'm, I, I'm so envious of you right now. I would <laughs> love to be in that position. That's like the best way to go. And yeah. honestly, like I... I think when that came out, like, sh- sure, I bought it, like, right when it came out. But I don't think I knew much about it. There were these mm-hmm. – this is just when, like, video game commercials were coming out. So you were kind right. of, like, <laughs> you don't even know what was going on in the commercial. But I remember I bought it. I knew nothing about it. And um, – I'm sorry. This is supposed to be eight. But I, I swear we will go back to no, it. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, it's fine. But, yeah, like, it. I think going in blind is best because I remember I had – vividly i don't know why i have to include this but i was also eating mcdonald's and okay. i had like these chicken nuggets and fries and i remember mm-hmm. like being astounded i was like what the hell is this because it veered so far off from well it kind of really wanted to go back to like final fantasy roots so it's like more uh-huh. medieval and high fantasy whereas like with eight i was coming off eight which is this great i think what i liked about it is because it was like more sci-fi but not Mm. sci-fi in the recent final fantasy terms like i mean like um there was something about even like their outfits like their towns Mm, that looked like it was 
a world that was possible that you could easily like live in like if it were a parallel world or something like it, it didn't seem so far off so uh-huh. i think there right. was something right. like that you could connect a little bit more i don't know like there are these like very realistic grounded things like you know it's it's so you know you start out as like a bunch of like you're in an academy with other students and there's stuff mm-hmm. like you know you're going to class and you have your dorm and there's a cafeteria <laughs> and it seems like all very kind of normalish and interesting until it like very quickly goes off the rails yeah um, which is great I never thought about that. The, this game really does kind of start, I guess, in, tr- in Final Fantasy terms, relatively normal at the beginning. Yeah. So, um, I think, it, yeah, it probably starts honestly in me like the most normal way, and that's I say this kind of loosely because you know how the opening cinematic is basically like, or when you wake up, like basically the beginning of the game is like you wake Mm -hmm. up in the infirmary and they're like oh you went overboard with training and like by overboard they mean like you slash this guy's face open (laughs) yeah there's like blood everywhere each other scars yeah like you also have a slash on your face it's not like you guys got into a fist fight it's like oh you were using a gun blade like what (laughs) it's such a weird (laughs) but like that you you just overlook i mean again because when you're just starting it you're like oh this is kind of cool. He must be a tough guy. Like he got into a, a brawl and it gets um, weird. And I think like some people think the game takes itself a little bit too seriously because how yeah. Squall is, you know, he's very like, he can be kind of mopey. And, and yeah, like, he, yeah, totally. He's like in his own head too much. But like at the same time, if you consider that this character is 17 years old like yeah of course he's thinking like that and the thing is is that like i don't know i kind of like how insufferably in the beginning it's a little annoying but then when once you've played it enough times you look back and like everything he says is hilarious if yeah you yeah take it with a grain of salt i find it really interesting too that um this game is they they really try to give you his thoughts like way more than they've ever done in a final fantasy game of like showing the inner monologue of someone. So I don't know. I, th- I think that's something too, that in my opinion helped me connect to squall more than usual for these like protagonists. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think like that might be one of the rare cases, like maybe 10, but I think eight is the most, mm-hmm. like it gives you the most insight into what, your main character is thinking like you don't have to guess at all like he's yeah. there's there's nothing that surprises you about him and i do like that very much but like i think that's also just a really it, like besides you know the actual the story that you're playing through and the battles you're playing like that whole like inner monologue is a totally additional layer of insight into this character that mm-hmm. like brings i think like you said closer in terms of like so when he starts to grow as a person and starts to change like it's way more meaningful because you see him like actively struggling with these old thought patterns of being really negative and down on himself and then him beginning to like actively challenge that and like not only hear like his friends voices in his head but like i think like his own personal journey is so much more uh yeah like visible and meaningful that way that i really liked yeah yeah i agree uh so and getting getting into that uh i know people tend to criticize this game for having kind of a convoluted story i don't know if you agree with that or if you think that's like a strength of the game um i know you wrote a whole article about uh based like the story of the game the history of the game for waypoint um, a couple of years ago, rest in peace. Um, but yeah, like, what do you what do you think about the convoluted nature of the story? Is that something fun for you? I, I yeah, I think it's very fun. I think it's um, it's fun in a way that I think it's fun because it kind of forces you to be in this position um, that is different when you play their Final Fantasies, and that like if you do distance yourself a bit and kind of you are aware that you are playing this game and like once Mm -hmm. you kind of appreciate 
how like it's ridiculous twists um <laughs> and this i say this in 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 um in hindsight because mm-hmm. i remember when i was first playing through it I didn't see anything wrong with the story. Like, I didn't think anything was weird. I didn't think sure. it was weird that they were blasting to space in, like, disc three. Like, I didn't think yeah. it was weird that they all passed out in the train car and had had the same dream and then, like, kept going like nothing was wrong. Like, I, I questioned none of it. And I don't know if that was just because I was, like, younger and I was playing it. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> right. Sure. Yep, yep. Um, so I didn't really notice it. I mean, maybe... Yeah, if you're an adult and have deeper critical (laughs) thinking skills, maybe you're like, what is happening here? But Mm -hmm. I think, like, if you don't take it as seriously as some of the other ones, um, it can be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. And then I I even think, like, some of the older ones also get really weird in this way. Like, I know even Final Fantasy IV, you go to the moon in Final Fantasy IV, there's a whole race of moon people that are trying to destroy the earth or whatever. So mm-hmm. this isn't really, it's not super uncharted territory for final fantasy in my opinion, but I get why some people find it kind of uh ridiculous and uh, convoluted, but also uh, I grew up with uh, kingdom hearts, so I'm used to it. <laughs> I'm, I'm in this world. <laughs> oh my God. I love kingdom hearts, maybe even more now than I did when it came out just because uh-huh. of how hilarious it is like i think i just watched a cutscene compilation recently it was like (laughs) the best thing i've ever seen i was like why didn't i appreciate this more like mickey shows up in like a dominatrix outfit it's so (laughs) absurd like and then yeah yeah then there's sephiroth and you're like sure i'll I'll fight you in a coliseum for points (laughs) like it's so great um but no i i think like with um like you said with the moon people and and sometimes there's like this deviation even even mm-hmm. then i feel like that's had this like weight and heft to it whereas here right. with eight once you have a deviation like you get to the end of the game with like the whole ultimesha thing everyone's yeah. like well um that i didn't Time really compression. feel like <laughs> that had a lot of gravity like it didn't really mean anything to me because they did kind of like force it on you at the end right. but I did, I don't know, like, I thought parts of it were honestly hilarious. Like, once you got to her castle, mm-hmm. um, I I think I was stunned by, I think that the music is amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. at the I time, the when I first, area. yeah, but when I first heard it, even the, the song for her castle is, like, equally, like, split personality-esque, where it has this very, like, I mean, you know, like, super ominous organs and doom and gloom and then it has this like weird silly part in the middle (laughs) yeah yeah it's like kind of like fun and you're like ooh, yeah and then it like dives right back into like death organ um (laughs) which is how i feel about the castle where it's like oh what a pretty castle and then there's like you have to fight a chandelier and you're like yeah what is this place and I just, I think I loved that. Like, I get why people might be like, why am I in this castle? Like, this has nothing to do with anything. But I think that's the strength. I'm like, yes, why am I in this castle? This is great. (laughs) Trying to figure it out. I'm going through all these, like, Resident Evil style clues to try and unlock the doors in this castle. Yeah, it's great. You know what? That, honestly, I just used a strategy guide for that. That was, like, way too cryptic for me as, like, with my, like, teenager brain. I just, there was no way I could do that but yeah there were very strange things there and then even like i think they're side quests too i know final fantasy is always great side quests but Mm -hmm. there are some that i feel like i guess now are i mean maybe not so much because they've like had so many offshoots but like these weird things that were not always in running final fantasy lore so like Mm -hmm. you know there's always like chocobos and there's always a card game and someone named sid sure but then like in eight i don't know if you like embarked on it but there's like Mm -hmm. there's a side quest that's just about a ufo yeah and (laughs) it's just like why (laughs) i mean (laughs) because it doesn't seem to have to do with anything and by by that time it's you know you might say like oh well you blast off into space. At, like, no, this right. this this UFO thing is like on your planet, and yeah, um, he's very cute. It's just like I don't understand it. It's it's so funny too because the reward for it is a card for triple triad. That's all it is. It's not even a particularly good card either. So 
Oh, it's not. Oh my god. <laughs> no, no, it's all right, but it's not great. Uh, do you did you like Triple Triad? Did you play a ton of it, or was that kind of a thing you didn't uh, bother with too much? Um, you know, in the beginning, I glossed over it. Then there was a period of time where. I did get into it, but I was mm -hmm. really bad at it. Oh, okay. And I'm like very embarrassed to say that like, that's like, you know, a, such a huge part of that game. And I realize a lot of people were obsessed with it, but I just, I, I can't, I just right. can't do it. Um, I, I think like it was, I just can't, something about its mechanics just didn't click. I know for nine, I was obsessed with nine's card game, but oh yeah. Um, weird because i replayed that recently and i also sucked at that card game so maybe <laughs> i just liked losing in it more but like um i think what i liked too about eight is with that card game is that it didn't always like force that on you like you could mm. do it if you wanted to whereas i think with other final fantasies like in seven remake and in nine like there are these periods where they kind of like make you play at least a couple rounds of uh -huh. this like other little side game to like advance your story or something and like i never really liked that i don't like being forced to play a game within a game if i don't sure yeah have to. <laughs> um but uh it's weird yeah because i think like the cards were such um like a big deal i remember as a reward but i like you said i feel like it was only a big deal if you were like very very good at the game already yeah and it's it's, it, it's interesting too because like uh like you said like seven and nine sometimes like force you to to play these mini games and this one i don't really think you have to ever engage with triple triad if you don't want to like you can yeah kind of just not do that um i do like that everyone you know that most people are like down to play cards <laughs> yeah. like which is pretty great even if there's like a crisis situation there's always an npc who's like oh yeah you want to play some Right. there's like an alarm going off and he's like uh -huh. yeah yeah it's like yeah, we're flying the the, sh the school around or whatever being fired yeah. by the other school i'm pretty <laughs> sure that's the time and like that's like a key yeah. time because everyone's like so stressed out and people are like don't forget to challenge this guy <laughs> Uh, another thing that we uh, really liked about this game, I, did, I don't know if you have any opinion on it, is like is the cinematics. I know um, this was the first time they used like motion capture in the, mm -hmm. the cutscenes and everything, and um, consistently, me and my brother Kevin were blown away every single time the game like does the seamless transition from CG cutscene to gameplay. Like it's so, it's so good. I don't know if if you love it as much as we do or not. Oh, yeah. I mean, that I think that was actually the draw for me to to play it because mm -hmm. um, like, again, because that was like around the time where they started doing video game commercials. And I remember um, seeing a commercial for one. And right before that, like I was um, watching my cousin play Final Fantasy seven. And so like even in the seven cut scenes, mm -hmm. like it, it's I can't even really properly verbalize the huge step up like you said oh, in yeah. cinematic quality that it was like it was like eating candy with your eyes like everything <laughs> yeah. was so smooth and like bright and gorgeous and you're like oh my god and like it just down to like you know the texture of like squall's hair it was it just like mm -hmm. blew me away and i remember thinking like this is like one of the biggest advancements in like video game technology that we went from the little polygonal, like kind of rough dumpy figures of seven. And then we get to this where like yeah. they look like people. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, that's beautiful. What, when we were playing it, that's what we were, we were saying to each other too, is like, I can't, I, we were playing the remastered one on the PS4, but even still we were like, I can't believe this came out on the PS1. That's so nuts to me to think about that this came out on a on the ps1 the same console as like crash bandicoot yeah and the, and the same console as seven and it's like it's astounding to me like that gap in graphics is almost like you almost think that's intergenerational like like from ps1 to ps2 or yeah. ps2 to three but like it was such a huge um it was such a huge jump um that and and like yes the in-game characters were a little rough 
But yeah. <laughs> even then, though, I, I like their pre-rendered, um, like their backgrounds and everything. Like that was so rich. I felt like that had yeah. so much. Like it just was like sharper. Had so much more texture. I don't know. It felt like more alive than um, certain parts of Seven. Even though I love Seven very much. Yeah, I mean, is there is there anything else you want to say about the game? I don't think I have any other questions I really want to bring up unless you have any opinions on Eyes on Me by Fei Wong. Oh my god, the best the best, the best. So good. Um I remember when I first heard um the song Julia, so it was just like that piano version. Oh yeah. And like I discovered that the I think like one of the only places I could find where that song would seamlessly loop was in the Shumi village. It was by a safe point. It was in a room. And I remember just standing there because I I just, I mean, this is like before YouTube. Um, Mm -hmm. And so like, I didn't have a lot of ways to like listen to my favorite game songs. And so like, I mean, it's just so beautiful. And I really love how, um, and one of my favorite things about the composer that he does in so many of the games is that he'll take like, you know, two or three, like, you know, I think maybe like two of like the game's most identifiable, like key main songs. And then Mm -hmm. like find a way to layer that through other songs in the soundtrack and like other areas. So like, yeah, like you're always hearing like either a different rendition of it, or if it's like a couple of chords and like, there's just this whole, like, it's not just, I think about the crazy story. I think like what, I mean, I would also love to talk about it more somewhere else, honestly, is just like about how the music is so, um, I think it's such a huge part of it. It's also uh-huh. so much of why I love eight in particular. I loved the soundtrack and it's not just like that the music was cool or pretty. It was that I felt um, each song, so say for like each like a town or area or something Mm -hmm. fit so well with not just like the scenery, but what you're doing in there, like the spirit of whatever that area was, you could kind of also hear it in the music. So like an example, like with Timber, right? When you go Mm -hmm. in there in the beginning and there's like that whole kind of like TikTok sound going the whole like in the right, background right. and like it's so evocative of like yeah like all these all the residents of timber are, like super stressed out worried there's like a resistance like it's very tense and and yet there's like also these moments of kind of levity in it which like you also have like fun moments in timber too as you're like walking around and talking to different people and like besides that and like lunatic pandora like oh, that yeah. crazy, like luminous maze, like maze. Sorry, that's like floating in the sky that <laughs> nobody really knows. That's also like somewhat alien. Right. I mean, also like this ominous, these like piano chords, but it sounds kind of spacey. And it's just like, I think the best part of it is being able to listen to the soundtrack and then like, boom, you're already there. Like you don't even have yeah. to play it. Like you can all, you can feel it. You're like, yep, I'm in this spot. And the vibe is right. Or not up to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, you know, in my case, it's like, I'll unfortunately listen to a song and be like, nope, that's it. We're playing it again. We're playing it right now. <laughs> yeah, I, that's, uh, that's a thing we always come back to in these episodes when we review these games is, yeah, Nobu Imatsu is the man. He knows how to do it. Best to ever do it, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So good. Just uh, consistently, the music is always always blows me away. And even like I mentioned earlier with Kingdom Hearts, um, I forget the composer's name for Kingdom Hearts, but that music is like ingrained in my brain as well. Uh, mm-hmm. So we'll get we'll, we'll get to those games eventually on this podcast. But the music is like yeah one of the, one of my favorite things about these games to be honest. Oh yeah, I think like um, also I remember like trying to get my hands on the the soundtrack and having to like track it down at a local anime convention and having to (laughs) wait for it to come around so I could go there and go to the merch booth. And I remember being like, Oh my God, I just paid $40 for this official soundtrack. And it had like little official art inside this tiny little booklet, which 
I just <laughs> was obsessed with. And like, yeah, there are these like tiny little pieces of paper with like little promo images of like Renoa or Squall. And I was like, this is the coolest. And it's like crazy because I guess now you can just like order it off Amazon or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but it, it was it was just like such a big deal for me to also like own some of the official art because I feel like that kind of stuff wasn't super available back then. Uh -huh. So, um, I don't know, but yeah, sorry to veer off topic, but that's oh no, 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 no that's all right. Soundtrack stuff. Yeah, I mean, is anything else from this game that you wanted to discuss? Uh, do you have any opinions on like the junction system or the GFs oh, or anything? <laughs> I mean, the junction system, like at this point, it's like if you know how to game the system. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, but I, like, never go crazy overboard with it. I think, mm. like, sure, I just obsessively stock up on things, and now I know where every draw point is. But yeah. And, like, I understand that. People, you know, would rather do, like, an ether and replenish SP than do the draw system. But mm -hmm. I don't know. There's something fun about that. And, like, honestly, props to them for trying something totally new because yeah. it's not easy to, like, implement that. That being said, yes, the GF system was a bit painful before yeah. the option, the remaster, which, right, like, lets you speed through it. Like, before, mm -hmm. yeah, you would have to sit through that whole freaking thing every time. And, like, God forbid you were in a boss fight and you had to summon Shiva, like, eight <laughs> times in a row. Right. Uh, yeah, that was pretty annoying. But um, I think that what I really loved that people also forget is Angelo who oh, like yeah. randomly shows up in battle which i love actually mm -hmm. like there's nothing more exciting than like being in a battle and then like not understanding why your ui like all the hp <laughs> like everything has disappeared you're like oh did my game freeze yeah it's not it's angelo just starts running in and he like what does he do he like kind of headbutts him and he like keeps running and then like yeah and just, then like, like you know you're like your display comes back and i was like wow the thanks <laughs> it's so cute so good. um and then I like really... renoa's uh limit yeah. break she like shoots angelo at the enemy from her little like wrist rocket thing i was always so concerned that i'd hurt him but he did this like yeah. graceful little flip and you were like oh no no no, he's good <laughs> he's fine he's fine he's totally good and i really love that sometimes he'll like dig up an item for you in the battlefield but that yeah it's like everything stops right including your enemy it's like everybody wait the dog has found <laughs> he's found in something <laughs> yeah like he found a potion no one's gonna use it but you have to stop because he's he's digging yeah. um i really liked that i liked um i know some people thought it was a little superfluous but i kind of liked having to find the monthly weapon magazines to oh yeah yeah get your upgrades i thought i just thought it was fun i think as somebody who likes to you know find little collectibles and secrets like it was just kind of an extra layer of fun but yeah it, it was it was pretty annoying when you miss like three of their <laughs> weapons you're like i could have had what um which happened to me in the beginning. But I, I thought sure. that was a ton of fun. I liked that they all, like, each weapon gave you, like, a different limit break or that you could learn. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, like, there were some fun, what is it? Like, why am I forgetting the term for it? Uh, the, the thing, oh, my God, quick time event, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> like, Squall's thing, right? There's yeah, something that like, are just, press like, the trigger. <laughs> somebody who's like very anxious like me there are some parts of that that were very hellish so sure. like selfies yeah, limit break right where you have to like roll through them uh -huh. and there'll be like random things and like the amount of times right i'd re-roll for full cure because i would want it mm -hmm. but you know precious time and so like there's the frantic you're pressing x pressing x you pass it <laughs> you scream and then you like it's just i'm like sweating thinking about it i didn't like right. that <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, the other stuff, I liked the fact that you got bonus characters whenever they passed out with Laguna. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think there were also a lot of untold things with 8 that I kind of liked that you had to, like, figure out by yourself or on a message board because every mm -hmm. other game would be like, oh, here's the thing. Here's all the information. <laughs> Whereas 8, like, the relationship between Squall and Laguna, like, yeah, you didn't really understand. Yeah, not even confirmed, really. 
you need to like have your eyes open and paying attention because i remember uh-huh. like later when i like yeah again write it on a message board i was shocked and i was like oh my right. god wait yeah because you know even in the ending you're supposed to know but like it's so, it's like for such a split second that you see her name yeah um, right but so, yeah that's so funny or even you know if you're if you're like us and you're always jamming on that triple triad you find out uh when you meet laguna in uh whatever that town is esther because he has squall's card um <gasps> in his like uh in his pool of cards and that's only that only happens in the game when the person's like related to the character oh my god yeah <laughs> that's wild so that's how we found out was playing triple triad with laguna oh wait that's a really cool way to find out yeah um, yeah i think that's so cool wow but i did not find out wow i just shows what you have missed when you <laughs> miss out on triple triad yeah, got, you got to play that triple triad. I know. I think I got to try it again. <laughs> I think I'd actually like it. I think I just, like, my brain couldn't handle it back then. Sure, yeah. It might <laughs> not fair. now, but, you know. Awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's all I have, unless you, you got anything else. No, I, I think I've, like, talked your ear off about oh, it. Oh, no, no. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This was so fun. Um, if our listeners want to hear more from you, where should they go? Oh gosh, where should you go? Um, I am not super active on Twitter slash X, but sure. I, you can find me there. I do have um, links to other stuff for my website on there. Um, Ashley.net. But um, on Twitter, it's ITS. Ash- wow, it's Ashley. What a confusing um, <laughs> thing. I, I, if I, I will say like, you know, quote ITS Ashley O end quote um sure <laughs> it really did not think about that when i made it so now verbally saying it will confuse everyone <laughs> well we got um, it but yes it's thank you actually <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah thank you again so much i i yeah. hope you guys enjoy um the rest of the amazing catalog and definitely please let me know about nine i would love to know your guys oh yeah oh yeah i'll i'll get back to you once we once we finish that up sure sure. right um but yeah that's that's it uh thanks for listening all you listeners out there see you next time 